Okay, what is IO psychology? Well, the stuff that I'm going to lecture on, you're going to find my lectures are typically going to be about some specific topics. You are going to be asked to read some stuff in the book and figure it out on your own. Um, take a look on WebCT for that kind of stuff. Depending on where we finish for a day, I'll have to wait for when we're done for a class. Then it says, okay, I'll make reading assignments on the website, make announcements in class as well, okay? But I can tell you, um, you will want to start reading all of Chapter 2. I mean, basically, you'll want to know that one front and back. Not because, again, you're going to have a multiple choice question test on that. Remember that we're not doing tests like that, but you're going to get a set of essays. I'm going to talk in depth about that type of material. Chapter 2 is probably the one you'll want to go backwards and forward because it will apply to most of the stuff that we do in the future chapters. The better you know that stuff, the better off you're going to be for any applications or assessments that we're going to do. But I will try to give you an overview into whatever we're talking about here. This, if you are curious, this is in your textbook module, really 1.2, uh, 1.3, a combination of those, if you just want to kind of see where this stuff is. But what is that? Who are these people? Where do they work? What do they do? And what is the I and O side? Because our semester is kind of divided first half size, second half O. Oh. Okay. Like I said, you don't have to worry about taking in-depth notes about this. You will get these slides if you're curious about it. But what is industrial organizational psychology? Well, big fancy book sound and definition, the application or extension of psychological facts and principles to the problems concerning human beings operating within the context of business and industry, anywhere people work. If you wanted to put something shorter in your notes, it's psychology in the work. Same thing. But for those of you that took me for intro psych, why do I give you these big long definitions? Why do I say things that are different from what's on the slide, maybe what's in the book? You remember our discussions on memory, the more ways that you put something in here, especially when you're first being exposed to it, the more, as they're called, memory cues that you have to pull it out. If I give you three different definitions, maybe one of them will stick. But if you learn all three, you have three different ways of possibly pulling out the same piece of information. Definition of industrial organizational psychology. But we are talking about just to set up some stuff. You may hear me talk about some things that if you remember your intro psych class, or another psychology class, or even another business organizational behavior class, something like that, might sound familiar. They're taking principles of the individual, but just in the context of the workplace. Now, who are these people? Well, where might you run across an IO psychologist? Some of you may never deal with an IO psychologist. That's fine. It doesn't mean that your life is empty. But these people are behavioral scientists specializing in human behavior in the workplace. Like I said, human behavior in the workplace, general definition of I.O. Practically speaking, you might find somebody who talks about these particular topics from these point of views, points of view, excuse me, in one of these roles. Scientists. Those are people who come up with principles of the individual group and organizational behavior through research. As I'll make a distinction in just a sec, these are people that kind of just come up with the ideas, the theories, maybe not directed towards anything. Like what motivates a worker entering the workforce in the 21st century? Valid question, right? But sometimes you're going to find that people don't care about a general discussion of motivation. How many of you plan on, some point, running your own company, owning your own business? Doesn't matter what size. Are you going to care what some sort of journal article published by an academic person or a scientist says about motivation, theory wise? My guess is the answer is more no than yes. Because it's not that you're not interested. But you want to know what motivates my workers in my workplace. That's pretty much what you care about, because it affects your bottom line and their wealth. Now, that's not a different topic. It's related. But it does require a different emphasis. Those are usually the consultants or staff psychologists. You may find people, especially in big organizations, 
They would be I.O. psychologists, but they develop and apply scientific knowledge to the problems at work. Think of it like this. The general scientist would be somebody what motivates workers in the 21st century. The consultant or the staff person is usually someone what motivates workers in the 21st century <coughs> at IBM, at Morrisville State College. Something more specific. And then, sometimes you get lucky enough to come across people like me. Teachers who train in the research and application of biopsychology. My role right now, I'm just giving you an introduction. There are people who get masters and PhDs in this field to do IO psychology. You typically need at least a master's level of education to call yourself someone who knows that field. But it's pretty much those three distinctions. You should also just be aware that those scientists, be they consultants or staff, this is something to keep in mind too. When you're thinking of how you deal with IO psychologists, you may have heard the distinction between basic and applied science. Maybe, maybe not. Most of you have done at least half of this. You're at Morrisville. It's an Agitech school. It's an applied arm of the SUNY system. Is it not? All of the research you read about, all the alternative energy research, it's not how do you market it typically. It's what's the tech? What's the process? What do you build? They're applying some sort of structure to a specific problem dealing with it in a specific way. It doesn't mean it's better or more suited to the problem. Depends on what question you're asking. That's something I want you to keep in mind. There's no such thing as useless research information ever. Basic science, this is what a lot of people think is a waste of taxpayers' money. How come we're not getting any answers out of these things? Why haven't we found a cure for cancer yet? Sometimes you have to start by acquiring knowledge for knowledge's sake. You have to figure out what generally might be a principle. It might not directly solve a specific question. So kind of keep that in mind as we're going along here. Basic science, you acquire knowledge for knowledge's sake. You just try to figure out what the general ideas might be behind something. Because once you figure out how something like motivation works, how teams should be formed, and what you should do, and what you should avoid. In general, you might be able to use that general knowledge to help solve your specific problem, right? Could go that way. Could go from basic to applied, which is saying you use scientific solutions to problems at work. A specific question to your workplace. Sometimes it goes the other way as well. Sometimes you find a solution that works wonderfully at your workplace. But for those of my automotive tech, uh, people, because I, I know you're in here, some of you. Do the practices at one plant like Toyota directly translate to others who are doing very well right now, like GM? No. The idea might work great in one place. You might try to pick it up completely, move it over to another plant thing, and if it worked here, it should work. Whoa, how did this blow up? See what I'm saying? Sometimes you're going, hmm. Maybe we need to go back to the drawing board and kind of think about what is the general idea behind why this specific process worked here, but not there. Again, I'm just bringing these points up so you consider this along the way. One is not better than the other, it's just each has its place, and each can feed the other. Okay, where might you find these practitioners, consultants? Staff psychologists, HR directors, human resources, and I.O. typically merge up. Managers, especially on the upper levels, might deal with I.O. psychologists. We're not talking Lumbergs exactly, but that I do drop a lot of office space references. And I will tell you right now that towards the end of the semester, you will have an extra credit opportunity that does involve actually watching office space if you choose to do it. So I will tell you that right now. Um, 